Let's take a look at how to create a procedural machine metal material in Keyshot. This means not relying on outside textures. So on screen, I've got a picture of a CNC machine and it is cutting a piece of aluminum. And you can see as the cutting bit spins and moves across the surface of the aluminum, we're left with these reflective looking streaks. And that's the type of material we're trying to recreate in Keyshot. And I'll show you how to do it without using any external textures, which is key. Here's another example of this type of look we're going for. Now we won't be able to get these little swirly uh, circular patterns going on, but we will be able to get these streaks and that's the main uh, appearance of this machine surface we're trying to imitate. Before I jump straight into showing you how to build this material in Keyshot from scratch, I wanna make sure you understand why and how it works. So let's go ahead and look at this first example on the left. If I double click on it, you'll see it's made using the generic material. And the reason we're using generic material is because it's got a property that we need called anisotropic angle. This is allowing us to control how the light is reflecting off the surface. When we get into the material graph for this material, we have the root node, we have our generic material node, we have a color to number node, and a texture. And if I preview that texture using C on the keyboard, you'll see that it's basically a circular gradient fading from black to white. This texture is in charge of telling the generic material which direction to reflect the light. So using the color to number node, we set our output from to zero, and that corresponds to our black value on our texture. So black, we're saying, is zero. And if we take our color to number and we look at our output two, this corresponds to the white value, and we use 360 degrees for that. So what we're doing is we're plugging that into our anisotropic angle, so now the generic material knows that every black pixel should go to zero degrees, every white pixel should reflect at 360 degrees, and everything in between it can figure out. So the results, because we have a full circle that goes 360 degrees, we are mapping these color values to the correct numbers, and that's why we get this correct looking anisotropic reflection. So I know this may be a little bit unintuitive, but let's look at our next example and build upon that. So looking at our next example, it's built the same exact way. If we look at its material graph, it's also a generic material and a color texture. This color texture I built in Adobe Illustrator to mimic the swirls that you get in a CNC machined toolpath. So if I double click on this texture and we zoom on into it, I can play with the contrast slider as well as preview it with C on the keyboard. And we can kind of see this overlapping circular swirly pattern that we have going on here. I've plugged that into a color to number that also goes from zero to 360. So it's telling the generic material again, which direction to reflect that light. And finally, we've got another color to number going into the roughness. The reason I chose to do that is because if I disable it, you will see that this material looks kind of flat. It's not incorrect necessarily, but I wanted a little more contrast and I wanted the two different directions of reflections to look a little bit more pronounced. So I used this color to number, plugged into the same texture, going into roughness, and the values I used here is 0.15 and 0.4. And that's going to account for the more reflective and the more rough parts of this texture as well. So let's go ahead and look now at how we can do that without relying on textures outside of Keyshot. If we look here at the next example and go into its material graph, it's very similar, but instead of a image-based texture that I made in Illustrator, I'm just using a color gradient that comes right from within Keyshot. You can right click, go to textures and get that right here. And the only difference I do wanna point out is if we preview this, we have a simple, a more simple gradient that just goes from white to black and then it repeats. So our color to number, instead of going up to 360 degrees, it goes to 180 because it's only a simple 180 degree gradient instead of a full 360 circular gradient. So with that, uh, I'm going to pop out, we're gonna make this from scratch basically on our model here. And again, you can download this to follow along if you'd like, link down below. Now the issue here is that we have one solid chunk of material and I only want the machining on the surface that's pointing up toward the sky. So I need to split out some surfaces. So I'm gonna right click, go to split object surfaces and let's bring the splitting angle down really low, 0.1. And the reason for that is because I put a small fillet between all these faces to give it nice rounded edges. To reduce the angles that, or the surfaces that we select, we need to bring that splitting angle down. I'm gonna hold control 
and left click and select all the surfaces I want to grab. And then I'll hit split surface. Next, we'll hit apply. And just to make sure that we've split this out properly, I want to right click, do uh, unlink material and double click on it, just so we're editing the right material. Now I'm gonna get in the material graph and we need to change our plastic into a generic material. Just double click it, use the drop down menu and go to generic. And it doesn't look quite good yet. We need to change its color. I will choose kind of one of these uh, lighter colors here. And what I wanna do is bring our metallic all the way up to a value of one. I want to bring the roughness up to 0.4. The higher the roughness, the more pronounced this effect is gonna look. So I'm gonna bring it up pretty high. Next for specular, I'm gonna bring it up to one. And for anisotropic, we need it to go all the way to one as well. Next, we need to texture our anisotropic angle. So I'm gonna right click, go to textures and get that color gradient we talked about. Double click on it, hit C to preview. And let's take our scale of this and bring it down to something small like 10 millimeters. This is giving us a gradient 10 millimeters across. And if we hit repeat, it's just going to repeat this texture over and over, which is pretty cool. To rotate it, all I need to do is change my angle to something like 90. And now we've rotated that into place. So let's go ahead and plug this in. I'll get out a C to preview. Just grab our connector, drag it right over the node, let go and go down to anisotropic angle. Now nothing really happened, but that's to be expected. We need that color to number to convert our color values into numerical values. Left click to select the connector, right click, go down to utilities, color to number. We'll just double click on this and we'll go into our output too. We need this to go to 180 degrees. Now, if we did 360, like we did when we used our image based textures, it'll look a little bit funky. It has twice as many streaks as we want. So again, this is a simple 180 degree gradient. So that's what we're going to use for that value. I want another color to number. So all we're gonna do is hold Alt, click and drag up. So now we've duplicated this and I'm gonna plug this into our roughness on our generic material. It looks weird, we need to change the values though. So for our output from, I'm gonna type in 0.15 and for the output two, I think I'm gonna do 0.4, just like the others. So this should give us a very familiar appearance like we had before. Now, if we wanna make the rest of this block look correct, let's just go ahead and into our generic material here. Just grab this node, hit Control C to copy it, then double click on the black plastic, get into its material graph, right click, paste, and we're just going to plug this into the surface of our root node. And now it looks like we have one solid block of aluminum that's been machined on the upper surfaces. I'm gonna go ahead into my lighting tab, go into product mode. So we have some global illumination, it looks a little bit nicer. Uh, one last thing I wanna do before I jump out of here, and just to drive a point home, we can actually save the same node setup and use different textures. So if I grab this angular texture, if I plug this into, my color to number to swap out the other gradient. You can scale this guy down a little bit. You can see how the same setup works for pretty much any textures that are fading from white to black. And uh, it works, works quite well. And there you have it. I hope this was helpful. And until next time, happy rendering.